So here's a company I really like, Dornbluth. It sort of follows this older standard of watchmaking where not everything has to be in-house, but they take what others create and bring it to another level. And they can make it for a pretty good price. So what I received from Dornbluth und Zona is really a complicated mess of a catalog. You have two little booklets that I'll talk about in a second. Of course, a nice handwritten note on this on this custom sort of postcard slash note card, and an October 2019 novelties printed in color sheet with some interesting things, and a price list that does not fit in the catalog. Slightly smaller, don't be. Slightly smaller. To make matters even more complicated, one of these books, the thicker one, is right, is the same side up all the way through. Why would that be anything special? Because the other one is not. Half of the book is on one side, and it flips. You have to flip it to see the other half. Not something I would have done, but they have it. <laughs> in my opinion, they should have they should have combined these two catalogs into one and have it the right side through, well, the right way up, one way up, should I say. Doesn't matter which side up, just one way up, all the way through. And that would have made much more cohesive catalog. It is soft cover, but I do like the texture on the cover. It's sort of this soft matte texture that I think is maybe the best texture for soft cover catalogs. A couple other catalogs have a similar texture and I do like them, especially for thin catalogs. When they're, when they're thin I do appreciate this texture over a more over a more papery texture. Inside the pages are a bit thin, a bit on the thin side, and and they have a nice texture, they're not matte, they're sort of that lustery texture that I do like. It's a, it's a design that goes all the way through, it's cohesive, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good design. Now to go through the contents. How am I supposed to approach this? Let me think. Let's start with the novelties page. Now, this first page shows Quintus 2010 Jubilar. We'll get to the Quintus 2010 part later. Limited to only 20 pieces. That's not great. But it is what I would call a good special edition. Not like the same watch, just a little bit different. I do wish they would do this. I do like how this movement looks in this configuration and uh, the watch itself. I do like the design of the watch and I do hope that in a few years, maybe maybe sooner, they release this watch in a non-limited edition way. The novelty is another one, Kratzwolf, Kratzwolf, however you pronounce it, I don't know. Uh, I only know that you have to pronounce and sons as Unzon, Unzon. Uh, three central hands, big date on the bottom. I was wrong that Sertina is the only company with that, but I would say this is a bit different because it doesn't take the place of a 6, it, it's sort of above the 6. It does have a nice power reserve indicator on the 12, that's unique, and I do like that. And then another, the third watch is just the big date, and then fourth watch is 91.1 medium. This is basically their 
regular, large, small seconds, we'll get to that later. Watch except two millimeters smaller. And I do like that. I do like, so their regular watch is 42 millimeters. I think 40 millimeters is the perfect size for most watches, especially dress watches like this. This is a dress watch, 40 millimeters, perfect. So that's all you get, and you get a price sheet. We'll talk about the prices later. Let's talk about the big book first. This big catalog has the history at the front of the watch. It's a very nice history. Now it also has a background story for the large eccentric seconds. So basically a small second style that's a little bit larger and makes the, the design of the wristwatches nice. And it's a nice, it's a really nice story. People are suckers for good stories. And this is certainly a pleasant story to read and I won't really talk about it, but it's a really nice story. And then we go through the whole collection, except for, except for some, <laughs> of course. But each watch, sort of, they call each caliber, which is, gets confusing because a caliber is a movement, but this is for each caliber, a few different variants and dials, styles and stuff like that. And they present the watches in the same way for all the different calibers which I do appreciate and makes it easier to compare the different watches. I do like this close-up photo for each of the movements. I wish it was a full page, sort of showing the whole movement and not just half of the movement, but it is the more important half. And with these earlier watches, I really do like this scroll work engraving. It is still in that normal watch bridge engraving where you don't have a background, you don't have that kind of scroll work but it has basically one big scroll and I do like that I of course I like blue screws shot thumbs, all of that it's very high quality finishing we'll get to the finishing later all done by hand of course well actually not of course because this company offers the watches for prices where you wouldn't expect hand finishing now something else that I really like about this catalog is that for each of the movements it describes each of the finishing uh, each of the styles of finishing applied to the movement, which I think is really nice and it shows that they really are proud of the fact that they have hand finished movements, which is nice. The screws, this I wasn't expecting, the screws get their own section for the finishing that they're flat polished, heat blue with beveled edges. I do love beveled edges on everything. And also, this is nice, they show the specs for each of the variants of the watch in a really, really clean and pleasing way that makes it really easy to compare the watches. They're close to each other and the specs are there. So now the question is whether their movements are in-house. I personally don't have a problem with non-in-house movements. I think if, if a movement is in-house and boring, there's no point to it. There are many companies that claim in-house movements and have in-house movements, but they're not special. Dornbluth, for most of their watches except for one movement series, basically has a movement, it brings in a movement and really takes it apart and maybe adds stuff on it as a, as a bridge or something and really brings it up to their level of finishing, which is what brands like Patek Philippe used to do. They weren't strictly in-house, but they had in-house components that they added to the movements. They did all of that because it's much easier to add stuff to an existing movement than to design your own movement with that addition. Now, when you get to design your own movement, you can make that addition sparkle and have advantages like a thinner movement or, or better aesthetics. But, especially for this price point, I'm certainly okay with this. I'm not someone who goes in-house, 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 where it's not in-house, but most of their components, many of the most important components to the watch are produced in-house, and they take apart the watch and refinish everything anyway, so... Honestly, it's very close to being in-house. Now they do have an in-house movement. You are paying at a minimum, lowest spec one is 
which is getting more expensive. But I do think that this eccentric seconds model of this in-house movement is absolutely wonderful. And it has something very unique to Dornbluth, the, the Maltese cross mechanism of winding the watch, which is something that was used on many old pocket watches. And I love that mechanism. I think it's a wonderful mechanism. And the fact that they have it, they did it, they show it, it really takes that simple movement and elevates it. It is a hand wind movement and I love hand wind movements, especially when something happens when you hand wind it. So their in-house movement is definitely a win for me. Now, and that brings us to the end of the first catalog, the slightly thicker one. So now let's move on to the second catalog. Now, which side should I start with first? Hmm, let me think. Let's flip it. All right, we've got a side. What have we got into? What have we got here? World Time Watches. So this is their set of World Time Watches, and no, they use their regular caliber, their non-strict, non-in-house movement. And this is a set of World Time watches, basically GMTs, right? That's what you call it, GMT. And I'm not sure if I really love this GMT. I as I, I tend to not like GMTs that much. The GMT function is its own subdial, which if you love GMTs and want to dress the GMT, then I guess this is your watch. Not personally for me. I don't think this movement gets crowded or anything, it's just not my type of watch. This is interesting, in this catalog they have a similar spec sheet, except they do show the whole movement. Now on to my personal opinion. I wish that they would have combined this catalog. This, this second catalog to me feels a bit like, this catalog feels like an update. It would have been nicer to have one cohesive catalog, but with a small company like Dornbluth, it's certainly acceptable. It's great that they have a catalog in the first place. Their base price model starts at about $4,000, and I think it is a great deal for what it offers. This watch offers spectacular hand finishing, something that is basically impossible to find at this price point, except for a few select, very small manufacturers. And I really do like this finishing. I do like that it's rose gold plated. That makes it stand out from most sort of German three-quarter plate and grave balance cock movements. And some one little detail that I really appreciate is that the engraved signature, the engraved company name, is filled with yellow gold. I love how that looks against the rose gold movement. I haven't seen that anywhere else. It is something really, really special. So the prices make for a great value on the low end, a great value for a hand-finished watch on the high end. It's a very nice, unique three-hand in-house movement that I think is well worth the price. I want to compare this company to another German company to really see how Dornbluth, what is their priority. Glashuta Original creates spectacular watches with a great level of finish now except for their hand carved balance bridge and a few other little details most of it is machine finished but it is an in-house movement and it is well machine finished this company Dornbluth what you sacrifice with the movement design you gain with movement finishing everything hand finished to an extraordinarily high level of finish that I am surprised that they can offer that at this price point. Another thing I want to talk about is the case. So in my Lange review, I didn't like the Lange case. So is this any better? I think so. It is different. It is unique. I do prefer the lugs, the sort of more flowing lugs. Now onto the watch design. I put this in the section of my opinions because this isn't a really classic 
classical German design like Lange or Glashütte. This is what I would call a semi-Bauhaus design, sort of this more rounded and airy looking design. I don't like Bauhaus design. I really, really don't. I do like the Dornbluth watch design. I don't love it. Now my verdict on the company. I really like Dornbluth and what they are and what they offer. They offer cheap, hand-finished movements. Uh, they don't play the in-house game of, ooh, this is in-house, so we don't need to finish it that well, or even if they, it is finished well, it's machine finished. No, hand finishing, top priority, after that, everything else. And I appreciate that, I love that. Uh, even though I don't love the design of the watch face, I adore the finishing on the watch movement. And because of that, if I'm looking for a dress, if I was looking for a dress watch in this price range, Dorn Bluth would certainly be on the top of my list. The catalog may be all over the place, but the watches certainly aren't. Thanks for watching the video to the end. If you liked it, please subscribe and like the video. Perhaps consider supporting me on Patreon. Any support would be greatly appreciated. I will be coming out with catalog collectors once a week for the foreseeable future. Of course, until I run out of catalogs. We'll see what happens then. See you in the next one.